three, two, one. Here we go! Good day, viewers, and welcome back to We Talk Namibia. I am Precious Nitanapo, your host for this show. We're back for this week's edition of We Talk, and in this week, we have an interview with individuals from the Austin Law Firm. I speak to Ozana Bilic and Eli. So these are law students from the University of Namibia who are in their fourth year, and as part of their academic um, journey, they are assigned firms. Now, Austin Law Firm is, of course, just an a fictitious law firm for academic purposes but they have been busy with projects which are involved in the community which i think is quite interesting so i think that interview is definitely going to be a must watch and if there's any way that you can help them with their projects please please reach out and do so but stick around for the rest of the show we still have we recommend we chill we chat we dine you name it we have it here and we are going to talk about it but before we get into it, first let's have a look at the news. Welcome back. It's time for our news edition. And in our news edition today, we look at women in engineering. The NAMWI empowers girls in STEM education. The Namibia Women in Engineering Association recently hosted its annual event in celebration of International Women in Engineering Day. The event held on the 23rd of June at NUST Innovation Center showcased the outstanding achievements of women engineers in Namibia and emphasized the importance of their contributions contributions to the nation's industrial and socio-economic development. Themed Reshaping Namibia with Emerging Technology and Innovation, the event brought together stakeholders including esteemed representatives from the Federation of African Engineering Organizations. That includes uh, UNESCO and the WFEO as well. Prominent speakers delivered inspiring addresses, highlighting the need to accelerate the capacity of women engineering practitioners in Africa. During the event, various thought-provoking topics were discussed, focusing on the impact of technology and innovation on Namibia. The event also recognized the achievements of high school learners as winners of an essay competition organized by Namwi during the celebration of World Engineering Day, as well as the winner of the virtual art competition of 2022. Dr. Simata, Dr. Smita, my apologies, Francis, founder and chair of NAMWI, expressed gratitude for the support received from various stakeholders, including NAST, who hosted the function and provided volunteers. NAMWI is dedicated to promoting STEM education and providing a supportive platform for women engineers and the unwavering support from NAST and the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment is definitely very commendable. NAMWI's impact goes beyond Namibian borders with the association's essay competition gaining recognition at global and African engineering forums as requests have been received to organize similar competitions for children across Africa, showcasing the influence and reach of NAMWI's initiatives. Looking ahead, NAMWI remains committed to promoting gender equality in engineering and empowering women in the STEM fields. Exciting events and initiatives are planned for the future, including conference, workshop and collaborative projects that aim to inspire the next generation of female STEMs leader. The association is dedicated to expanding its reach and impact, creating a diverse and inclusive engineering industry in Namibia. Now that is definitely something I'm looking forward to see, a diverse and inclusive engineering industry in Namibia. But that does bring us to the end of our news edition please stick around for the rest of the show and enjoy we are so excited to be kick-starting your morning with the entertainment everything was happening mm -hmm. during 
this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Good day viewers and welcome back to yet another edition of We Talk Namibia. I'm Parish Nitanapo, of course your host and presenter for the show. Today I am seated next to Ozana and Eli. How are you guys doing? Good day. Very well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so can we just get an introduction on who we are seated here with for our viewers at home? So firstly, thank you for inviting us to your studio. Uh, my name is Rosanna Bilic and my colleague is Ilay Maswahu. We are uh, fourth year students in LLB Honours Program at University uh, of Namibia. Okay, so law students, hence the law firm of course. Now I understand that the Austin law firm is busy with a few things, but can we just also get an introduction on what the Austin law firm is? Well, the Austin law firm is a fictitious law group or law firm mm -hmm. created by the legal aid um, course or you know module at the University of Namibia so we are made up of 13 students mm -hmm. and we have a supervisor Ms. R Ruth Nishekwa who helps us with the assignments that we deal with mm -hmm. throughout the course of the year. Okay yeah. and um, when was the law firm started when was this officially handed over to you guys as students? Uh, so usually at the end of the first semester of academic year 2023 mm -hmm. that was this year uh, our lecturer uh, forms randomly groups of students and those groups are then uh, actually uh, put into the different law firms with their specific names. Okay. That's how it all starts. Now I understand that it is um, for education purposes but what are the aims and objectives of this law firm for you guys? So um, the aims and objectives are more based on the fact that it's academic or mm -hmm. it's educational. So our aims and objectives is that we have two major assignments okay. during the, the course of the year. The first major assignment is that you have to help out with real life cases, mm -hmm. real life clients um, in civil matters like divorce and whatnot at the legal aid clinic, mm -hmm. whereby we work on cases that are from the high court and then we do research for them and all that. And then the second part or the second major assignment, you have to plan an impact um, research project as your group or as a law firm whereby you know you decide what projects you're going to work on in the community who you're going to help out the less fortunate ones and all that yeah okay so this is basically like the second part of the project right now are you guys in your helping out the project stage sort of uh, mm -hmm. we actually have to work concurrently both the two assignments at the same yes. time so okay now speaking of um the two projects i know that the firm is busy working on two projects can you just please elaborate on those projects and so, the individuals uh yes so we decided to take uh two projects as uh, as we know namibia is a development car uh, country mm -hmm. uh, there are many prevailing issues but maybe one of uh, two of maybe very uh, important uh, uh, quality education and as well high unemployment rate. So therefore we decided uh, to have like two projects to assist uh, Michelle McLean Primary School here in Ochimuis in Winduk oh, and as well Mr. Ramsey uh, who is a, a small entrepreneur uh, mm -hmm. uh, making uh, interlock interlock bricks mm -hmm. from reusable and recyclable material. Uh, so basically us, obviously as a students in tertiary institution, I think it's kind of natural that we are interested and in, uh, looking at the future generations to assist them. Mm -hmm. So uh, primary school that we picked uh, was built in 2000 uh, in, as a joint venture with Ministry of 
uh, education, culture, and sport. And at that time, uh, it was also uh, assisted by Michel McLean uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, as maybe public these days uh, think, the foundation just handed the school mm -hmm. directly to the government. So it's oh. a public school. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are facing as many other public schools with many issues. Mm -hmm. So two of uh, which we identified and were also conveyed by uh, Principal Miss Lezazi, two major ones, uh, are uh, uh, feeding program that they are uh, trying to establish and uh, they are in lack of chairs for the students in classes. So for the feeding pro program, uh, the issue is that uh, from total number of 1,167 students, mm -hmm. around 420 are vulnerable or privileged students that are coming from families where parents are unemployed or coming with a low income. And therefore, those parents are really struggling to get them basic necessities necessities for the school, but what is most important, those kids unfortunately don't know when and where their next meal will it's be. From. Yes. Yeah. So therefore, the school is trying to establish kind of a feeding program where at least they would provide them one meal a day or something simple, or maybe from the state staples uh, food that they can store there mm. because we know that with empty stomach you cannot you focus cannot learn, and yeah. learn well. Uh, when it comes to chairs, uh, we would like to help them because there are many students sitting on the desks during oh. class. So we would like to either donate chairs or at least materials. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, uh, we are looking and seeking for any other kind of donation, such as maybe friendly user books, because their library is very scarce, yeah. considering the number of students that they that have. They have yeah. And uh, also uh, any kind of maybe even building materials, because we have to mention there is one class that is still schooling in the tent. Oh. And then any anything else that can help them in improving their infrastructure, because playground is completely unmaintained, their sports field is just empty. So whatever can come handy uh, or any kind of assistance that would be very welcome. Mm -hmm. So for the second project, we picked Mr. Ramsey. Ramsey. As we already said, he is a small entrepreneur that started his business in November last year, 2022, and he's currently employing uh, nine uh, people. Wow. So for him, in order to develop his business, uh, we are trying to get donations in uh, uh, tools, machinery, equipment, equipment. Uh, also some kind of financial aid if possible, so he can uh, improve generally on his business, because uh, obviously, you know, he doesn't have a proper office, uh, storage and stuff like that. Yeah. So the, uh, the unique component of his business, and that is also why we picked him and we found it interesting, is a sustainability element mm -hmm. because he is producing interlux from plastics. Plastic, yeah. Yes, so that means it's uh, we are reusing already some of the mm -hmm. waste and uh, obviously there are many positive effects by employing people from his communi community mm -hmm. uh, then uh, also uh, uh, promoting small entrepreneurship in informal settlements mm -hmm. uh, protecting the environment as we mentioned but also if you look in the bigger picture it can positively affect also uh, economic status of Namibia yeah. and also uh, we are uh, putting on the market new products. Yeah. yeah. I think it's quite interesting both of these projects including uh, Michelle McLean the primary school as well as Mr. Ramsey. How did you guys stumble upon Mr. Ramsey? Well, it was just a simple uh, uh, stuff in the media, simple mm -hmm. clip in the media that kind of dragged our intention, intention, because mm -hmm. uh, no one of us was aware actually that there is a person, there is a business that is actually doing this and yeah. that he actually started it from his own. He already also did some kind of a testings to prove the quality of the product so yeah. he can provide certain guarantee on it. So it was quite interesting and something different. Mm -hmm. But again, 
uh, something that definitely uh, can, you know, when you look into the future, we mm -hmm. believe can develop and benefit overall community. I think that's definitely an interesting one, considering the fact that he only started last year in November and he's already employing nine people and he has proved and tested the quality. It's very, very impressive. Now, um, you guys are doing so much towards these schools. What attempts have you guys taken? What are what is what is the strategy that you guys have in place in order to, you know, achieve what you have in plan to assist these individuals? Well, so our plans or our current timeline is mm -hmm. that we plan on with the school we plan on doing some fundraisers mm -hmm. or you know some sort of gathering donations from different companies whereby we can use those donations to probably help out with uh, with the school and then we are also planning a book drive whereby we can collect books from different people and institutions and those books will be thereafter handed over to the library of the school yeah. which also helps building up the library. And for Mr. Ramsey, on the other hand, we intend to do a cleanup, you know, with um, a tag along with the city of Vindic, city of Vindic yeah, where we can collect um, plastic materials or waste materials, which we'll then hand over to Mr. Ramsey mm -hmm. for his business. Because his business, one of the major problems is the collecting of materials. Of materials. Yeah, because it's hard True. for him to travel from place to place. To, yeah. yeah. Especially because now we're, we're actually um, doing away with the whole plastic in the environment. Yeah. And to see that there's actually something good that can be made from it is quite interesting. So I think it would be a great collaborative effort with the municipality, City of Vintuk, to just assist Mr. Ramsey in that, in that order. I think it would also be nice if you guys can reach out to different municipalities. I know um, the Sokop Moon municipality, they always have um, cleanups as well. So if we can just phone and then just ask them, you know, just collect it and we will make transfer or provide transport to have it I think that would be great assistance as well definitely, yes, definitely. but on that note I just wanted to find out I know that um, I you are busy with these two projects but are there any future projects that we can ex expect from Austin law firm well so the the legal profession in its own is it's an ongoing process mm -hmm. it's never ending so despite this being a school project Mm -hmm. uh, we never know what the future holds. At mm -hmm. any point in time, we might come back together again and yeah. try to do something that is beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, you know, help out in different ways as well, because you never know what you will need at some point in time or who you will need to help. So yeah. it isn't really guaranteed that we have future plans, mm -hmm. but it's also not a guarantee that it will end it here. It will end here. Yeah. But with <laughs> the work that you guys are doing, I must say, I definitely look forward to the future of it. I definitely see it growing and I definitely see it making bigger moves. But yeah. before we end off our interview here today, is there anything else that you guys would like to add? Well, uh, we would like to uh, invite public to uh, engage and help us in completing our projects. And uh, we have contact numbers that will be displayed so they can contact us for any other information. And as well, you can follow us on our Facebook page, Austin Law Fund 2023, as well Instagram, Austin Law underscore Law underscore Firm, where we'll be uh, uh, putting all the information and uh, uh, future developments and outcomes of the project. So all kind of donations are welcome and please help us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that brings us to the end of our interview. Ozana and Eli, thank you so much for making time and for stopping by and just for sharing a bit more information on the projects as well as the Austin Law Firm. Thank you so much for having us. Thank that brings you. us to the end. Viewers, please stick around for the rest of the show. Hi, my name is Dalian Stefanis and I am the owner and manager of the Food Lab Soccer Mund. Um, the Food Lab is a social and um, foundation, it's a social cooking class, we do social cooking classes here and we also run a youth foundation where we offer cooking classes to out of school youth and uh, just generally people in the community would like to pursue a career in hospitality and cooking. Um, our foundation is Essentially, the reason why we started the foundation was to equip youth 
with a skill. You know, we want to give them a skill that we know, uh, my chefs and everybody who's involved in the foundation, people know how to impart that. So we want to give them a skill that they can take out and start a business. Um, we, at the moment, we train foundations in cooking, which includes everything from um, health and hygiene, we do costing, we do business management, and then we do actual cooking. You know, initially when I started, I just wanted to have a social um, cooking school where people just come to do cooking school and they just do classes and have fun and cook. But the past two years, we've been having a very big increase in failures of children for grade 11s and grade 12s leaving school and not having anything to do. And I just wanted to start something that can really give them premium skill because we're not here to teach them how to make fat cakes and we want to teach them how to do great food and then go out there and start a business. So the core of this, of this foundation is to teach them how to become entrepreneurs and not just to give them a skill, send them out into the world and then they don't know what to do with that skill. You understand? We want them to leave here with the skill and the ability to start a business, to empower themselves. Um, at the moment, we have one student, the proudest moment of my life. Um, I really believe in, um, in, in slow progress and building brick by brick. Rome was not built in a day. At the moment, we have one student who's finishing his three, his three month um, program. And um, we just went into an agreement with our regional governor. I had a meeting with him here, Mr. <clears throat> the governor of, of Erongo, sorry. I just com confused myself there. And um, we came into partnership and we want to also decentralize it. So we don't want to do it just in Swakopmund. We want to target all the other areas, Omaruru, uh, Karaba, Hentis Bay, Wallfish Bay, you know, go out there and train people and then also give that, that skill to them. Okay. I mean, the only challenge really that we have is funding. Um, not so much for the equipment and and the food and stuff that we use at the school, but just to, to pay the, the, the facilitators. That is really where it is. Um, it's really a passion project, but everything moves with money. So we're just looking for funding to be able to get our facilitators from here, say to Maruru, house them and keep them there for a week and have them train 10 women, 10 men, 10 whoever needs to be trained and then come back to school. So really funding, but we are working on it. We've engaged, like I said, we've engaged with the governor's office and we will be engaging with business people around the community. We are also, this is just the beginning. We want to go out into the central Namibia. We want to go do the south. We also want to do the north. So it's not just specifically for the foundation, it isn't just for Swakopmund and Erongo region. Um, I just want to tell the youth that um, not everybody's going to be a doctor or lawyer or a teacher. Um, there are so many careers out there that you can that you can venture into. Food is a wonderful, wonderful, um, it, and it's vast and broad. You don't have to. I I'm not a chef by profession. This is a passion, so I bring food to the people as I'm doing now. There's so many ways that they can come into this world and do other things. So I want them to think outside of the box and not necessarily think if you come here and you do a cooking class, then you have to be a chef. You know, you can be a food blogger. The world is so open. You can be, you can do online. Um, you can become a food, what, what do they call it? The, the, no, yeah, the people. Uh, it's embarrassing that I don't know, but you know, you can cook on online. And yeah, like, like, like you know, the, the vloggers. Yeah, food vlogger. You can become a food critic. There's so many things that you can do. And it doesn't, this does, food does not, uh, stop you from doing it just in Namibia. The world is, is food. So, everybody. I, yes, everybody eats. We're always going to eat. We're always going to want nice food. So, really, there's so much that they need to do. And I just want them to come, think outside of the box, and become a part of this very amazing, very amazing movement.
it's mid-month and it would seem things are on the quiet side, but that's probably due to the icy cold. Or the west wind that is hammering the coast. However, if you would like, on Friday at 7, SA's Car and Zoid and Henry Steel perform at Gordon Fong Restaurant in Volpus Bay. Tickets will cost you 450 bucks. On Saturday at 2, Salukadi and Friends host a fundraising concert in the National Theatre. Tickets cost 250 bucks and all go for a good cause. At 7, Secret Sunrise presents Immerse 2 at the Village Opera House in Vintook. This includes a selected menu of three wines and six food pairings. Tickets cost between $450 and $500 and are available via webtickets.com.na. If you haven't seen it yet, the collaborative exhibition, The Fish That Sees Its Water Is Getting Shallow, Cannot Be Stranded, can still be viewed at the project room until the 15th, while a digital art exhibition titled European Values Seen by Young Italian Artists opened at the Franco-Namibian Cultural Center earlier this week. This can be viewed until the 19th. With these icy or windy temperatures, depending on where you are, stay at home, stay warm, and be safe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does unfortunately bring us to the end of the show. I am Precious Nitanapu, your host and presenter for the show. I hope you guys enjoyed every segment of the show and that you definitely picked something up and that you contribute for our next edition as well. But for me, it is, of course, goodbye until next week. Two, one. Here we go.